Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today is the anniversary of Battleship New Jersey being recommissioned in 1982. This was part of President Reagan's 600-ship Navy initiative, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Following the end of the war in Vietnam, military spending began to decrease, the size of the Navy began to decrease, and the military transitioned from a draft force to an all-volunteer force, which made individual uh, manpower more expensive and meant that the number of people in the armed services began to decrease. At the same time, the Soviet Union, traditionally not a naval power, perhaps sensing weakness, began to deploy ever larger fleets of ships, and they became more aggressive with forward deploying their vessels. During this time, uh, the primarily submarine navy uh, began to be supplemented with powerful surface ships, such as nuclear-powered missile-armed battle cruisers, uh, helicopter aircraft carriers, and eventually plans for full-on supercarriers that could match uh, Western ships like uh, were present in the U.S. Navy at the time. President Reagan campaigned on a policy of outspending the Soviet Union on military technology. Supported by Secretary of the Navy John Lehman and Secretary of Defense Caspar Weinberg, they crafted a strategy to bulk up the U.S. Navy to a force of 600 vessels. They did this by rushing construction of new ships, such as the Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines, or the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers and Ticonderoga-class Aegis cruisers uh, by holding older ships in commission longer, such as many of the frigates, cruisers, destroyers, and older aircraft carriers, and bringing truly ancient ships back into service. They looked at both uh, the World War II-designed heavy cruisers, still in the mothball fleet, and the Iowa-class battleships. And in the end, they decided that the Iowa-class battleships could provide both heavy naval gunfire support for troops ashore. They could be easily retrofitted with the modern missile technologies then being developed, such as the Tomahawk cruise missile and uh, Harpoon anti-ship missile, which are still in use today and were developed during that time. Uh, and they would be a potent deterrent to a Soviet surface force, particularly the nuclear battle cruisers, which though well armed, didn't have much that could truly risk sinking an Iowa class battleship and were themselves entirely vulnerable to any type of fire that an Iowa class battleship could put on them. Because Battleship New Jersey had been in commission the most recent during the Vietnam War, she was in the best material condition. So she was pulled out of the mothball fleet at Bremerton and taken to the Long Beach Naval Shipyard in 1982. A year of work was put into the ship in order to graft on the modern radars and missile systems that would make the ship competitive in a late 20th century surface fleet. President Reagan was back home in California around Christmas time in 1982, and so the shipyard rushed completion of the work scheduled for early 1983 so that Reagan could become the only sitting president to ever commission a U.S. Navy battleship. The Soviet Union embarked on a massive program of militarization. Since around 1965, they have increased their military spending, nearly doubling it over the past 15 years. That happened today, 38 years ago. By the time President Reagan left office, the Soviet Union was on the decline, and during the term of his successor, George H.W. Bush, the Soviet Union would completely dissolve, and the need for a 600-ship Navy along with it. Reagan and his secretaries of the Navy and Defense never got the force up to 600 ships. This would have been approximately 250 warships and 350 amphibious or supply vessels. That they ended up just a few ships short by the peak in 1987 before ships started to be decommissioned again. Uh, 
many of the ships which had their service lives extended reached a point when they were just too old to continue to contribute militarily. These ships included some of the older aircraft carriers, like the World War II era Lexington, uh, Midway, and Coral Sea, the Iowa-class battleships, of course, many of the older frigates and submarines, and the nuclear-armed cruisers were soon decommissioned ahead of their time. All of this happened in the early 90s following our participation in the first Gulf War. Today, the U.S. Navy is smaller than it was at the beginning of World War II before the Two Ocean Navy Act went into effect. A series of secretaries of the Navy have vowed to increase the fighting strength of our force, but we no longer have a robust reserve fleet from which to draw new ships, new designs in the works to bring out new ships rapidly, like Reagan was able to do, or ships in service that haven't already had their lives extended a number of times. The new building program for frigates, attack submarines, and ballistic missile submarines are a good start, but the Navy really needs to be looking at a future for destroyers, cruisers, and a cheaper alternative to the Ford-class aircraft carriers. A lot of parallels can be drawn between the early 1980s and the present day. We have a second superpower in China, which is increasing its military spending and the number of naval vessels that they are constructing. At the same time, the United States needs to be matching this. While 600 ships is probably too much for today's Navy and sounds like a lot, actually it means only 200 ships deployed worldwide at any given time because one third of ships are worked up and ready for service, another third of ships are in the shipyards, while our third third is either uh, training or transiting to or from the forward deployed area. When you think of 200 ships, uh, only about a third of which are actual warships, that certainly doesn't sound like enough vessels to both police all the world's oceans at a time when NATO military partners are decreasing the sizes of their fleets, uh, nor enough to fight an actual shooting war in which ships will be disabled or sunk and require extensive periods in the yard. Thanks for watching. How big do you think our 21st century Navy should be? Let us know in the description down below. The battleship receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from viewers like you. There's a link in the description below to our GoFundMe campaign. Any donations you make to that not only supports the museum, but it directly supports our YouTube channel and allows us to continue making videos like this one. And as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when we put out new content. Even through the holiday season, we're trying to put out several videos each week, and we appreciate you watching them. See you next time.